Day's not done, but uh, number one, thank you for being here. Always an exciting day, right? National Sign Day, the ability to continue to enhance uh, your program through talent acquisition, um, both as human beings and as football players, and certainly today uh, has been an awesome day so far, and it is not over. Um, but first and foremost, I want to thank, there's, there's a ton of people that have a hand in putting this class together. And they never, ever make the media, they never get much credit, but I think it's important to recognize them before we get started. Um, the recruiting staff, it's obvious, they put in countless hours. You often hear coaches' names in there, but those, the men and women of that department, they do an unbelievable job. Uh, compliance, right? They're all over every bit of our processes to make sure that we stay on point and always represent the university um, with class and in the right manner. Um, the custodial staff, the, uh, the, um, the grounds crew, they keep the place looking like a five-star hotel all the time. And they work unbelievable hours. And their attention to detail, it, um, it's part of the culture here. And they certainly are a huge part of that as well. Uh, the creative team for us, who the stuff that they do behind the scenes, uh, is incredibly just impressive, but on top of that, the hours they put in to make that a reality is also just as, a, let's just say we're really extremely appreciative of them. Our op staff, who's always keeping not only our current team, but you know everything going as it relates to our future uh, student athletes, um, Jessica Lopez and her academic team, uh, what can I say about them? They, they've taken our, our academic status as a program to a new high as it relates to our team GPA and uh, hopefully here soon our APR as well. But um, you know, the list goes on and on and on. Everyone in the building has a hand in this, all right? I know you guys want to talk about players, all right? But it's important to recognize these people because they all have a heavy hand in making this happen and they're all extremely, we're all extremely appreciative of them and we're not done yet, okay? The night is still young. There's a battle or two maybe out there that's still going on and obviously the transfer portal is something that we're going to be very active in and have been so far so but all right so far the class of 24 uh, has a chance again to be um, what it's what we strive it to be the best in the conference um, and maybe the best in our history maybe surpassing last year's class as we continue to push uh, into um, the night we felt that last year we had to address the line of scrimmage and we did so in a big in a big way with the offensive line and this year we have done that with the defensive line. Um, and we're still continuing to pursue some other prospects that can help us as well. Uh, the breakdown of the class itself, 11 offensive, 14, 11 offensive, 14 defensive players, and one specialist. Um, we expect to be in the top 10 every year and top five in our classes, and the best in our conference every year. That's our goal, that's what we strive to do, uh, and to be the best in the state of Florida, okay? That being said, there's at least five All-American selections in our class, um, five Under Armour All-Americans in our class, nine ESPN 300 players, eight players in the 247 top um, 247 list. Um, but in the words of Jimmy Johnson, I'm more concerned about how they play than how they are ranked. I know you care about rankings. I know it's big for you guys, but it's exciting, right? It's an exciting time. The best part about it, they were all here to watch this practice at some point in time. They understand our culture. They understand and get our DNA. They're recruited heavily by our own players. That means that our players have connected with them already. They know the expectation. They know that we're here to work. And they know that we're working this into reality. Um, the message has been consistent from the beginning. And they've been attracted to that. And so have their families. And it feels like they're, they're already very, very well connected with our program. Um, some transfers we can announce, some we haven't. There's some paperwork that goes with that. Um, so I guess I'll leave it at that until we have, I guess, a little bit more confirmation on what we, con what we can comment on and what we cannot. But we uh, continue to stay active to fill a couple of different needs that we still have to do. Okay, with that being said, open to questions as it relates to the class and certainly bowl preparation has begun, I believe we're in our practice number five or six with a couple of workouts in addition to that where the players have run practice on their own and they've done a great job. They certainly have, they're eager to play this football game uh, and all of us are excited to meet our new members of the University of Miami football family. So that being said, questions. Mario, um, first, uh, you know which transfers you can announce officially? I wish I could. Okay. Wouldn't that guy right <laughs> 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 
Second, yeah. second, uh, a lot of guys that you were kind of going down to the wire, you flipped late, Justin Scott, uh, Jordan Lyle, uh, a few other guys you were battling for, a few other guys that you probably can't talk about yet, but right. you battled for late and were able to flip. Just how important is that recruiting tenacity? And then the third question is, is that your fifth cup of coffee or six? It's super important, critically important. It's the way you recruit has to be a reflection of the DNA of your program and what you do with your players in terms of their preparation. And I think it's a great way to show parents, hey, this is our diligence in the pursuit of your son because we believe in this partnership that we're about to embark on. Because when we prepare your son, and he's here, whether it be for an upcoming test, a paper he's got to turn in, a community service event, an upcoming game, that we do go the extra mile, that every single detail is attended to so that they always have the best chance of being successful. So that approach and staying relentless with that um, and being just very, I would say, engaged as a program. It's not just one person recruiting a guy. Making sure that everyone's involved and that you're genuine. That this thing right here, it's, if you're not genuine with this right here, it's not gonna work. And our people are very passionate because they have a very strong belief from our administration, our university, the community itself, that uh, you know the progress of Miami and the direction and the trajectory of the University of Miami football program is something that is going that way and is unstoppable. So that it's uh, it's awesome to be a part of, and I think they feel that, and I think that's what's brought all this stuff together. And an honest and uh, diligent approach usually pays off pretty well, and so far, so good. I'm a little bit excited, man. So I'm probably going off on a couple of tangents, but. Hopefully that answers your question. Mario, what did you add on the defensive line? If you could speak on that group, maybe specifically also about Justin and Marquise, but all the guys in particular. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll go down the list here. My man Cam prepares so many sheets, you know? <laughs> it's like quality control stuff. And he knows that my eyes are getting worse by the year, so he like labels him up top like that. I mean, that's um, um, where do you start off there? I mean. You could start off on, on the interior, you know, Justin Scott and Artavius Jones, about as explosive as you could be for a big man. These are wide bodies that are great athletes as well. One, a state weightlifting champ. The other guy is playing basketball, which I had a chance to go see the other day at uh, an invitational out there in Chicago. We have had great defense alignment from Chicago before, right? If anyone remembers Russell Maryland, old teammate, my brother's roommate back in the day, first overall pick. Well, Justin is a, a massive, massive man, extremely athletic, great family, awesome mom, um, great student, great high school. Just if you if you want to get an idea for his athletic ability, turn on his film, watch him run the football. There are no plans for him here to run the football, but. In high school, watching him run the ball 330 pounds is a pretty good indication of the type of athlete that he is. And Artavius, Artavius is a freak of nature as it relates to strength and power. Here's a guy that at that age, I believe he's 17 years old now, is already benching in the neighborhood of 425, 450 pounds and can squat 600, 600 plus, okay? That being said, he plays with that strength too. Sometimes it doesn't transfer over, it does for him. Two awesome young men, powerful, big, strong. Um, and then going right down the line, Marquise Lightfoot, as explosive, as athletic as you can have off the edge. And all these guys are similar with their traits. All these guys are relentless. All these guys play with a high motor. They're really good technically, and that's our job to get them better here. But they're long, explosive bodies. Marquise joining us from Chicago as well, one of the better defensive ends in the country. Cole McConaughey, you know, right up the road in Mobile right there. Another guy that we identified on film as a guy that really fits our DNA, really fits what we do defensively in that edge position. Our edges are coming in the form of defensive ends and jack linebackers. They're interchangeable depending on what the, the offense is showing us. Explosive, tough, physical, tremendous growth potential. Uh, Dalen Russell right down the street from Columbus, one of the best players in Dade County, uh, one of the best defensive players in the state of Florida, for that matter, that led that team to a state title. Uh, Mother University of Miami, alum, awesome people, awesome family. Um, I got some more guys coming up here. Elias Rudolph, um, six foot four and a half, probably more on his way to six foot five. A little bit thin at 215, 220. 
but as talented as it gets, and another guy plays with an unbelievable motor. This guy is, he's what you want coming off the edge. He was a little bit injured this past year, so he didn't get uh, the amount of reps and the statistical data that you, you, know, you usually get with a guy that plays his position. But certainly he, uh, he's a guy we're super, super excited about. Um, Booker Pickett, sounds familiar, right? Played here, he plays both. He's gonna be a wall linebacker for us, but also has third down snap value at the defensive end or the edge position. Just a natural, natural pass rusher. You know, can flat out go, all right? One of the premier guys in the country. Blessed to have him here. I always tell the guys, I was recruited as a brother of somebody, and I was like, hey man, am I being recruited because you like me or because I'm gonna help, you know, sell more tickets to the Latin population in town, right? All right, I wanna be recruited because I wanna, I wanna be a, a player here. He was recruited independently of his ties to his father. Great football player. Uh, we talked about Elias, we talked about Cole, we talked about Dalen, Justin, Marquise, Artavius, three, four, five, six, did I get seven? Okay. With 26 people, you know, you gotta help me out if I missed one, man. I don't wanna call tonight from a parent telling me I didn't talk about their son. Okay. Um, I think that covers the defensive line. Can you talk about Zaquan Patterson? Yes. He's getting here in January, obviously. You know, he's saying he's off to the NFL. You guys have developed the pressure mm -hmm. super well. Do you see him as someone come, come in, do all the right things, and you know, mm -hmm. potentially help you guys? Yeah. Well, that's the best thing, you know, when we get these guys get here, we impress upon them how important it is for them to be professional about everything that they do. Unfortunately, nowadays, um, and fortunately, because of the transfer portal, the, the movement in college football, the unpredictability, of rules changes, you're a freshman have to be ready to play. So they almost have to bypass the immaturity of freshman year and get right to it, okay? Zaquan is an absolute stud, top to bottom. As a competitor, as a physical presence, as someone who represents himself and his family extremely well, I think a lot of you guys have seen him play in person and his value not only as a, as a safety, um, but also in the form of a special teams player. He is all over the field all the time. He sets a tone for that team in a couple of different ways with his captain um, status, you know, the way he verbally approaches his teammates, but also the way he sets the tone physically. You know, he's a tone setter with the way he plays the game, his style of play is something really impressive. I've been going off somewhat again, we just asked, you guys had so many freshmen playing more roles for you guys. Do you find that resonated a lot out on the green trail this year? I think so. You know, it's um, it just validates what we've been saying. You know, we always said, hey, we gotta come in, we have to restructure the roster and then we have to build and we're gonna progress and we're gonna become competitive and then we're gonna become pretty good and then we're gonna become really, really good. And You know, along those lines, they see, they see that we're doing it through um, a little bit of everything and a lot of it being development of our football players. And so, you know, sometimes, you know, programs are built, um, not solely, but for the most part through the transfer portal and then some others are built mostly through, you know, high school classes and maybe a couple of junior college acquisitions and. And we like to have a, a, a pretty good blend of both, but primarily we want to be a developmental program. And, and these guys, they know, they've been told when they come in in January, they got to be ready. Uh, they got to be ready to compete. They got to be ready to fit in and adapt to a culture that's going to demand the most of them in turn to make them the best that they can possibly be. So all in all, it's just, a, you know, there's a lot of work that goes into identifying these guys. And it's not just a film. Yes, of course, the film has to have a certain level of um, ability, right? A certain caliber player that can help us achieve championship status. But with that, he's got to be a championship person as well. He's got to understand the value of a University of Miami education. He's got to understand how important it is for us to have a positive image all the time in the community and the impact in turn they could have on our community. So these guys really, really fit that mold. And uh, again, we look forward to, to adding some more names here in the near future. Mario, uh, you had eight guys from Dave and Broward uh, in the class this year. Mm -hmm. And have you found that as you've, um, you've been back in Miami for longer and longer that recruiting those top four guys, you know, it's, it's getting easier for you or getting just, uh, you're able to do it more efficiently because they know you, they've seen you around in South Florida? Right. Um, I don't think recruiting will ever get easier. And that doesn't matter as to what label you wear um, the type of year, whether it was a great year, whether you didn't have a great year, I think recruiting is almost a season within itself. Now, I remember being across the country and going, man, all those players right there, but it's still about selecting the right ones, and Miami in their best years 
did a really an unbelievable job of identifying the right ones and then getting them over here. And what's happening is, you know, you saw these guys play last year. And, and I mean, there's a lot of examples, right? I mean, from Wesley to Ruben Bain, Ken Kitchens. Um, I could go on and on, you know that, Damari Brown. I mean, they've had Mark Fletcher. They've had so much success so early um, that they're your best recruiters. And not because they, they play, but because when they go back to their respective schools, they talk about, man, from an education standpoint, right? Our academic services do blank. And from a nutritional aspect, this is what we do to get our bodies right. And then from a preparation standpoint, this is how we work, this is how we practice, this is how we train. So that right there is, uh, it's the best form of advertising, right? I remember taking business classes right here, right? About what, 800 yard walk that way. And they always said the number one part in, in establishing a great business was what? Location, location, location. And the best form of advertising was what? Credit to my teachers, they kind of ingrained this in my head. Was word of mouth, right? Your clientele, well, our guys are doing great in school, they're doing great on the field, they're doing great in the community. And their families are able to see them and take part in this journey. You can't beat that combination, okay? You can't. And now as we continue to forward forward and progress, that becomes more and more powerful. And, um, you know, hopefully it'll keep snowballing and bring even more. Mario, a uh, quarterback, Joe Anderson, he's mm -hmm. been a little bit under the radar. Mm -hmm. But, you know, what do you, what do you like about him? And also, the second part is how important is it to get a transfer QB in light of Tyler Feeney? Mm -hmm. Well, Judd Anderson impressed us from day one with a couple different things. Number one, his leadership skills, right? Uh, we saw him play basketball as well, his ability to move, make people miss, uh, balance body control to be able to twist, bend, get out of just really difficult body position was impressive. And then he was relatively new at quarterback in a particular high school before he made the move to another one. And before long, you saw statistically what he did. It's hard to do that. That many yards, that type of completion percentage, that many touchdowns, natural leadership skills, and just flat out tough, you know, like unfazed. And there's something to be said about that, right? When you are, when you're the one touching the football on every single play, it's got to show. And your teammates got to feel that. And it, it just oozes out of him. Very hungry, tremendous appetite for betterment. Um, very proud of our quarterbacks right now. The way, the way, very proud of Jakar, the way he's practiced so far. I'm looking forward to watching him play. And yeah, we're always looking to add to that room. Uh, we don't play our, we don't show our hands, you know, in open. But you guys know, we're always on the hunt. Your, your wide receiver class, and you don't look at rankings, but on paper, it's a strong class. It sure is. Can you talk about each one of those guys, that trio you, you landed on? Mm -hmm. sure. Well, you know, we always um, refer back to Chance, because Chance really launched this thing at the spring game, right, when he committed right there, right after it. And that certainly, that caught a lot of attention. And that led to a bunch of other guys that played together growing up to turn their attention to the University of Miami. but. His physicality, his development, that guy's completely changed his body over the course of the last 12 months, maybe 18 months. I mean, he looks college ready right now. Awesome family, physical, fast, strong, makes all the contested catches. Just an elite player, elite person. Um, you know, JoJo, we've known about JoJo just like Chance for a long, long time. Again, all these guys know each other. Um, both these guys is, you know, locally, it doesn't, it doesn't get any better than that, right? These guys have... They're, they're human highlight films. You watch JoJo and some of the stuff that he's done over the past couple of weeks alone, you realize that, man, this guy, like Chance, is a guy that we've been recruiting for, for multiple years. Across the country, I was already recruiting these guys, and now it's a reality. They signed their paperwork today. Game changers. Guys that can beat man coverage, guys that understand football, that have played since they've been knee high, could find soft spots, and if it's not the perfect girl, they could go up and make it happen. Love it. And then uh, Nightcar, you know, was we were fortunate enough to have him when he decommitted to turn his attention this way. And he's like these guys, he's, he's a rocket ship, you know, extremely fast and explosive. Another guy that the ball's in the air, he's going to be the one to find a way to get it. A competitor, and the words of his coach, just like the words of the coaches over here, both Damian Jones and Roger Harriet, that, you know, Sean Calhoun up there at uh, Colquitt County, that all three of these guys are just relentless competitors and they're un unselfish teammates. You know, yeah, they want the ball, 
Yes, they want to score. They probably want to touch the ball on every single down, but they understand the value of their teammates and they'll block for them. They'll work hard for them in the off season and they just want to win. So this, that room just took a monster step in the right your, direction. Your offense this year did a nice job of showcasing the mm -hmm. receivers. How much do you think that was a selling point to these? Oh, it was huge. You know, it was, there was so much progress and there were four games where we were, uh, you know, where if we could have been even relatively close to our other, you know, eight games, our numbers would be staggering, you know, but the, the jumps in production and yards per play, yards passing, individual statistics for wide receivers, like you mentioned, distribution. I believe we had two of the top three receivers in the conference um, in, uh, in yards per game and yards overall. So it, uh, it sent a strong message that we want to play an exciting brand of football here, a physical one and an exciting one. You can combine those two and uh, we're getting closer and closer to that. Along those same lines, can you just talk about Elijah Lofton and what, what he kind of brings? He's obviously a unique athlete and, you know. He does it all. You've seen him play now. That is as versatile as a football player as I have ever seen because you watch him do everything. I mean, you watch him getting empty and as a tight end, him motion, get in the backfield and run the football and runs it as good as any tailback you'll watch on film. You see him stretch the field as a detached tight end wide receiver. You see him in the core as a blocker and then play action and protecting as well as stretching the field vertically. Tough, tough, tough. Explosive, athletic, uh, extreme. He's another one like Artavius where he has just natural power and strength. A natural 300 plus power cleaner at that age, which you know, those things are rare. They're hard to find. So he's another guy that we feel is college ready and looking forward to getting him real soon. You're an O-line guy. Take us through your, your O-line group. The O-line guys, well, it starts with the human skyscraper, Markel Bell, right? I'm sure you guys really enjoyed seeing him. Eric Winston saw him before a game on the sideline. He was, oh my Lord, you know, let me go over there and see uh, if this guy really is that big. So you've got, um, you've got Markel, you've got Nino, you've got Juan Minaya, and you've got Derek Plass for the high school, you know, class right there. Um, a couple of things. Derek Plaz and Juan and I have served as tremendous ambassadors and recruiters for this class. Every class has one, right? Every class has a guy that's the flagship guy. That's what these guys did. These guys are athletic. Oh, I'll go one by one. Plaz, super athletic, right? Long, lean guy, 285, 290 pounds with growth, uh, growth potential, B320 plus. Smart, tough, just top to bottom, exactly what you want. Manaya is a large human being, right? The 6'5 range on the way to 6'6, 340 pounds. Um, just a mauler, right? A guy at the line of scrimmage, once he fits you, he's not coming off you. Dents the line of scrimmage, runs you back, and he's got really good balance. Nino, this great story, he was down here vacationing with some of his classmates, right? The prep school, extra year. And he heard Miami was having a camp. He said, I want to go down and prove I can play. And he came down and absolutely knocked it out the park. And we offered him soon after. Physical, smart, and he has what a center has, tremendous personality and command of a room. Just really, really bright guy, articulate, well-spoken, uh, powerful, all right? Again, knocking out the A-gaps for a center in our offense is critically important. And then Markel Bell, the top junior college offensive lineman in the country. It's not just the size, it's the athleticism. Uh, Les George's coach. Uh, is a phenomenal developer of talent and character. Um, Markel fits the mold of the guys that he has had under his tutelage and is another guy that with a good winter conditioning program and a good, uh, a good spring football session will be ready to help us immediately. So all in all, and again, not done there, you know, you know some of the other parts we can't comment on yet um, as it relates to the portal, but that's an area where you know, we, uh, we're getting closer and closer to not only the depth, but the type of quality depth that we need to sustain really high level play. Miami had had a high school player sign up uh, St. Thomas right uh, since 2019. Uh -huh. uh, you guys get forward this year. Obviously, it's a really good program. How, how important was it to kind of yep. build up? I mean, obviously, yep. Coach Taylor helps, I'm sure, but just to build relationships yeah. there. Yeah, I didn't know that. I didn't know that's a great stat. You know, that is a great stat right there. Tuan Russell texted me this morning, you know, and let me know that. He was, he's an old teammate of mine and an awesome, awesome player, you know, and one of them being, you know, the son of a former player as well. And, and Rod Mack, I mean, this is like, a, 
We know the caliber of football that's played in Dayton Broward County. We know how what a storied program that St. Thomas is and right down the road, right? Chaminade as well. And you look at all the guys from the different programs, um, there's one thing that's that's relative to all that they have in common. They're all championship programs, right? They want at a high level. Uh, we want to be in these schools every single year and we hope that every single year we can, you know, have a pipeline that continually feeds the University of Miami and the guys have tremendous success here. Coach, you guys grabbed two running backs from South Florida last year, the same this year. I mean, what would you say about those caliber guys and the speed? The speed and power. You know, our running back room is continuing to work its way to what it needs to look like. I think everyone always measures the running back room by what we had here back in 99, 2000, 2001, right? You know the names, uh, McGee. Portis and Frank Gore and James Jackson and probably missing a couple in there, right? But um, Davenport. yeah, Davenport, it wasn't too bad, right? Those guys were awesome. And, and you know what, we had some great backs here when I played as well. Um, and these linemen are better than the lines I played on, except for Leon Searson, he was really good. But um, that, that backfield, okay, the way it played this year, the way it developed and progressed, in combination with development of a big, massive, powerful offensive line really bodes well for us to have a balanced offense. All right, again, great players down here, high level of development down here, right? We've got South Broward High School and Chris Wheatley Humphrey and Jordan Lyle again from St. Thomas, two guys that just amassed a massive amount of yardage this year. You know, tough yards, open field yards, make people miss yards, catch the ball out of the backfield, really physical, really talented, Really intelligent, high IQ guys, both on and off the field. Thrilled to have them. Mario, you guys, I don't think you've uh, mentioned yet, uh, Darius Hayes. How did that recruitment play out between the Florida for so long, and then just now what does he bring to the I remember going there in January of last year. He already had been committed. I'm like, man, I just caught a wind of his film. It's like, wow, that guy's an unbelievable player. This is a big, this is a throwback linebacker, right? Because he's over 6'4" and he's 240 pounds, he's knocking people around all over the place. And it was like, that's, that's a poor job by us. We haven't, you know, we, we were late. Um, Cause nowadays, if you're not two years early, you're late. And uh, coach Derek Nicholson uh, led the charge and was just unbelievable in that process and being honest and being relentless and uh, built a great relationship, you know, and, and had help of course, from some of the other guys in the room and um, it just kept turning and turning our way. He, he just really is into the direction of our program and how we do things. A private school setting was a, a people until they come to Miami and see Miami, they don't understand. I mean, some people, you know, like they saw Scarface back in 88 and they think, hey, Matt's, you know what I mean? Or saw Miami Vice. It's like, come on, man, like Crockett and Tubbs are not around anymore. You know, everything's <laughs> different, you know? Uh, and so we always, we always just really push, get down here and look at our campus and meet our people and then try to beat it. And if you can beat it, more power to you. But once they come down here, it just changes their perspective. So, uh, and that certainly was the case here and it just grew stronger and stronger. Awesome young man, incredible energy, really physical, gonna be extremely hard to block in practice, but we're okay with that. You know, he's gonna be on our side playing. Coach, you mentioned that Miami's at its best when guys from Miami stay home. As you continue adding those pieces to your roster, how excited does that make you about your, the future of your program? Come on, man. <laughs> you know, you know Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Palm Beach, you know South Florida. I mean, look, look, we're not strictly only a South Florida program, but it's important that the best players down here do stay home, right? Why? Because I guess if, if Miami didn't offer, the University of Miami did not offer an unbelievable education, if the University of Miami did not offer elite administrators, elite support staff, if it did not offer elite opportunities in life after football, if it didn't offer elite um, facilities and resources, then I understand why maybe you should go far away. But when you could do it right here, in front of your family, in front of the people you've been playing, in front of since you were this tall, and affect the community and have impact, how many times in your life are you gonna be able to have that kind of an impact? You know, that's like a real thing. And, and you know, it's deeper than just football. You know, this is an entire community tied into this thing. And so it's incredibly powerful. 
Um, it creates a lot of momentum. I think we're seeing that and we don't see it slowing down anytime soon. So, I mean, class of 25 and 26 work has been going full throttle, right? Which we carry, I mean, it's been all morning with that and pushes beyond and we expect to get better and better. Mario, Mario, you spoke I have a three part question for you, so I know you hate one part questions. It's all the same thing though. First of all, congrats on a, on a great recruiting test. But, Is that uh, part one? No, that's the statement. Sure. Um, so the, the, portal, portal, the portal quarterback situation, A, do you want someone committed by the new year? You don't have to write it down, you'll remember it. No, I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm deciding which parts to answer and which not to answer. So A, do you want someone, and do you think someone will be committed by the new year portal QB wise? Is it a must to have a portal QB enrolled for the spring? And the third part is just how Emory Williams is and he'll be, at, be back to the spring uh, as of now. See, I already answered this question. My answer in the form of we're always looking to enhance our roster and get better. So we're good to go. Good answer. Appreciate you though. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Mario, uh, you spoke about Zaquan earlier. Yes, sir. Uh, the other defensive backs, if, if you could touch on them, and then uh, most of them played safety, but any position flexibility, maybe some corner, or how do you kind of envision these, well, the other five? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, we're still hunting down a bunch of guys, okay? Um, some have played safety and safety linebacker, and some are really big where those bodies might naturally grow. Uh, Isaiah Thomas from Ontario. Um, this, he's out. He got hurt this year. He's a he's a long, athletic safety that also plays in the box. And you know nowadays, if you play that boundary safety spot, you're like a will linebacker. You know, so he has position flexibility. Uh, Dylan Day, what a year he's had, and he's played it all. He plays in the middle of the field. He plays down in the box. He plays out as a nickel, the field corner, the boundary corner, does it all. And he's a uh, like a rolling 10, 700 meter guy that can flat out. He can fly. You know, so he's got a ton of flexibility, awesome family, just like Isaiah. Um, OJ, OJ, who transferred to St. Thomas this past year, played offense and he played defense. Most of these guys do. They play both sides. He's played corner for the most part, just like Ryan. Ryan Mack, both these guys, and I'll go individually. OJ, again, just great hips, feet, speed, recoverability, excellent, ex awesome family. Ryan Mack, very athletic, tough, physical, has played ball and played that position and been going against JoJo and those guys like his entire life. So he understands the position really well, extremely savvy, athletic, fast, uh, prototype that you want at the position. Um, we talked about Zaquan already, you know how we feel about him. Um, who else, where am I at? Mm -mm -mm. Cam. Where am I at? Well see, Cam, Cam is a linebacker. I know that he was listed here because he was at 200 pounds. This shows you his athletic ability. He plays wide receiver, okay, and he's had unbelievable success there. He's played in the middle of the field as a safety. He's played just outside the box, and he's also played in the middle. He's played on the edge, all right? If you want to watch, watch the, uh, the Alabama-Mississippi All-Star game and watch this guy strike people. This guy's something else now. You know, he's like a, like a human missile, and he does it on special teams as well, so. But I would think of him more in the linebacker category. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, and all right, Cam's got this all screwed up here a little bit. Three, four, five. Okay. <laughs> I got one more for you. Special team. Mario. Give it to me. The last one is Murray. You spoke about everyone else. If you yeah. speak on the kicker. Abram? Yep. Yeah, he came out here. It was the best best story ever for a commitment now. This is like <laughs> so Abram. Uh, he comes to camp and he's hitting 62 yards. Like, I'm like, this, this guy's an NFL guy working out, or what, what's he doing here? And I get word, you know, we have a, an event and we end up over by the pool um, where we just host and hang out and all that other stuff. And the coach told me, I think this guy wants to commit. And I'm like, well, he's really good. We should take him in a year, you know, and he might be gone in the NFL or we're going to have an extra year, but he's too good to pass up. So he was offered a scholarship and um, he's sitting there with his family. And so I'm walking up to introduce myself. Man, the guy, he just walks right up and goes, coach, I'm committed to Miami. And just that's it. <laughs> so we recognize him as the world record fastest commitment in Miami history. I never had a chance to sit down and give my University of Miami spiel. So an awesome uh, young man, just really, really talented. And I think what makes him really good is that he's unfazed, like his demeanor, his work ethic, uh, he's a great tennis player as well. Um, just very athletic. Uh, he, it's just a powerful leg. This guy's an automatic touchback. Uh, 
I told you the range that he showed us in in camp. We're, we're really glad it happened. Coach, you've, you've been a lot of places where stacking top 10 classes year after year after year after year mm -hmm. um, is the norm and then leads to success. Right. What can you say about the importance of that being a piece of right. the success and building oh, yeah. things? It, uh, it starts with your roster. It starts with people, you know. I uh, do a lot of research when we put this stuff together. You know, I think Miami, you have to do it. I'll find the statistical data. On the previous five years, the amount of decommitments during the recruiting cycles was staggering, you know. Um, and then the attrition, and then um, the the NFL draft cohort, right, is where you know there was a dip. So to change that, we have to develop players at a high level. But you also have to recruit really talented players. Um, and that being said, it's been just a an, a complete commitment, an utter just attack on making sure that we are recruiting the best personnel and that the personnel that has the character and work ethic to match. Um, and if you could put those successively together where everything looks different, right? The guys that come out the huddle and run the first play to the ones they're competing with, the ones they're competing against on the practice field, your program just takes on a a whole different face. I mean, every single place, every single place. It started with talent acquisition and then in turn of player development and finally personnel use. And we feel like all three phases and all three areas are are really steadily climbing. Um, and we're, we're excited and we've always been motivated. We're kind of like really like high energy motivated human beings. And um, I can honestly say that the motivation right now is at an all time high and it ain't stopping. Mm -hmm. The list of early enrollees. Two screws on him. That's two strikes. It's. Uh, I believe we'll be at twenty. I believe we'll be at uh, probably twenty-six, maybe twenty-eight. Trying to get the third. You know we. Uh, you know you got to manage a roster, guys. Let's call it what it is. The day and age of the transfer portal. Um, you know you have to. You have to do and you have to make moves that are in the best interest of the program. And obviously uh, before the bowl game, um, throughout the bowl game, you have to make sure that all focus and everything is on taking care of business and playing our best game against Rutgers. And then at the same time, sign a class, a large class, knowing that attrition is a big part of college football nowadays. And find a way to make it work, you know? So we're, we're just heavily engaged and continually just pushing the envelope in talent and character acquisition.